Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be creating this material on a sphere. I'll just go out of my camera. I've got three area lights in the scene. Lighting is extremely important whenever you're creating materials. But if you check the description or the top comment, you can go ahead and download the studio setup so that you can follow along without any issues. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to start by going to Create, Shader, Cinema 40 Octane, Octane Composite, drag and drop that onto the sphere. Let's also go to our plugins and open up the Live Viewer and just send this over to the Live Viewer so we can see any changes being made over here. Double click to open that material and then open up the Node Editor. Okay, so a Octane Composite material allows you to blend three materials together, so it's a great way to create really complex shaders. I could have used a mixed material, but I'm just going to show you the Octane Composite. So since this is its own material type, we can't use an Octane material. You'll see if I drag and drop this out here, I can't connect this to anything. So the only materials that work with an Octane Composite is a sub-material. So I'll drag and drop this here and connect this to Material Slot 1. And a sub-material, if I go to Basic, it basically has all of the material types that you'll find on a Octane material. So I'm going to change my material type to Glossy. And then let's continue. Okay, so you've seen from the thumbnail that this material doesn't have any shine or even re reflectivity or any indication of roughness applied to it. And I wanted that overall aesthetic for the material, but I am creating a glossy material. So if you guys want to add some reflections later on, you'll have that option available. But for the purpose of this material, I'm going to go to specular and bring my specular value all the way down to zero. So there's going to be no specular highlights on here. And with my roughness value, I'm actually just going to increase this to 0.3 and press enter. Now it's time to start adding all of those dots that you see on the material and we're going to be using a generator. So everything that's green over here is called a generator and this generates patterns and different effects for your materials. So we'll be using a noise generator and I'm going to be connecting this to the diffuse on my sub material. So now you can already see there's some uh, difference or variation in the gradients over here. And I'm going to change my noise type to circular. So you can see there's four different noise types. So we're going to be using circular. And the omega value over here controls how detailed the pattern is. But if I bring this all the way to zero, it makes the pattern very, very simple. And this is exactly what we need. So right now it really doesn't look like much. And that's because we still need to control this gamma value. So the gamma controls how much of this pattern is visible and how much of it is going to be hidden. So you can see by increasing the gamma value, we can start to see these circle patterns a lot more predominantly. So I'm going to put my gamma value on 73. Okay, and then the contrast, if you bump this up, it also creates like a harsh a separation between uh, gradients. But I'm going to put this contrast value on actually 0 0.01, so not much. But you can already see that we've got these dots on our material over here. So the overall scale of these dots is way too large. Just go ahead and select the noise and let's click on UVW transform. You can see it automatically creates this transform node for me. Now I'm going to uh, keep this ticked. This does a uniform scale and I'm going to put my value on 0 0.442 and press enter. So there we go, it scaled that down. Uh, but just to get these dots to be laid out a lot better on my sphere, and it can even work for other uh, geometry as well, more complex geometry, I'm going to select the noise, go to projection. So there's our texture projection node. Okay, and I'm going to change this to XYZ to UVW. Now this depends on what mesh you're using. Maybe the layout will look better on mesh UV, but in this case, I think it looks better on XYZ to UVW. So there we go. Now we can see a lot more of these dots on our sphere and we're getting that starry night uh, type of aesthetic that's being created over here. Now it's time to add some additional color onto our material and to do that we'll be using a mapping node. So everything that's maroon is called a mapping node. So we'll be using the gradient mapping node. Drag and drop it over here. You'll see that this line turns orange and if I let go it automatically connects that node for me. So now I can go ahead and select the gradient and start adjusting the colors here. Okay, so for the purpose of this material, I'm gonna make sure I keep this value black, and then this color, it can be whatever I want it to be. So this is gonna be like an underlying layer of these dotted uh, spheres that you see over here. And this color is going to be blue, so I do have some predetermined values. I'll just type 235, 78, and 85, just so I get the exact same shade of blue. And I'm using the HSV slider. 
So there we go. So this is my underlying dotted layer for our material. And before we move on to creating the glowing dots, I just wanted to show you why I brought down the specular. So if I select the sub material and go to specular, you see if I increase this value, it starts bringing in these reflections and it starts looking quite shiny. And that's not what I wanted. And obviously this could have just been a basic, I could have put this on diffuse, but keeping it glossy and bringing down specular gives me this option to add back some reflectivity if I really want to add that on my material. So it's nice to have that option available to you. Anyway, I'm going to put that back on zero and now let's create those glowing dots. Okay, so let's create our second layer and this is going to be the glowing dots. So I'm going to make sure that I'm dragging out a sub material and then connect this to material slot two. Select the sub material, go to basic and let's make this material type diffuse. So I'm going to make sure there's absolutely no chance for me to add a reflectivity or any shininess onto the material using this sub material. I'm going to go ahead and select the RGB spectrum and connect this to the diffuse. So this allows me, you'll see if I select the RGB spectrum and go to shader, I can choose any color that I want over here. Okay. And just to show you how these two materials are blending together, if I select the octane composite, go to material two and I start increasing this value, it starts blending these two materials together. So you can see that underlying blue that we just created with the dots from the first material. Okay, and I'm just going to leave this, let's say on a value of, we'll put this on 0 0.2 for now. You can always adjust that later. Okay, but I want to select my RGB spectrum and I want to make this completely black. Or oh, well, close to black, I'll say 2% over there. Should be fine. And yeah, there we go. And let's continue. Okay, so we've already created our dots. So all you need to do is just hold down shift select the noise, the gradient, and the transform, as well as the texture projection, then hold on control just to duplicate this. And let's go ahead and just leave this here for now because we're going to be connecting this to the emission. Okay, so quick tip before we get to the next part where we create these glowing dots, make sure that you've got an octane camera in your scene and on the octane camera, go to post processing and enable post processing and then increase the bloom power so that these dots can actually start glowing. You can see what it looks like with the post processing off and with it on. So just make sure you've got that enabled. All right, so I can't just grab this gradient and connect it to emission. We need to create an emission node as well. So scroll down over here until you find a black body emission and connect that to the emission and then connect the gradient to the texture. Now go ahead and select the black body emission and if I start increasing the power, you'll see that this material starts to glow. So now this looks really, really cool. I've actually got it on a value of 163,559. That's the exact value I'm using for my power. But now you can see there's this uniform glow across all of these dots and I wanna create some variation in the glow. And remember these dots that we created at the beginning, uh, basically the transform value here is exactly the same and I want to offset that a little bit. So I'm going to select the noise at the top. I'm going to select this transform and on the Z, I'm just going to move this a little bit. So I'll offset it by, let's say minus 27. So you can see some of those other dots present over here. Okay. Right, so you can notice it over there. It's quite subtle. If you want to, you can go back to your Octane Composite and maybe bring down this mask value. Now you can see these dots a little bit more predominantly over there. Okay, I'm also gonna go back to my transform over here and just make these dots a little bit smaller. And I'll select the transform for our glow, make it a little bit smaller as well. So you can, you can obviously take full advantage and full control over how big you want these dots to be. But I want to create some variation with the glow because I don't want this uniform glow. I want this to look a little bit more interesting. So to do that on the black body, we have a, an option here called distribution. And if I plug something into the distribution, it's going to basically determine how the glow is distributed across this material. So I'm going to be using a, another one of these generators. Okay, I'm going to be using the turbulence generator. So I'm first going to drag in noise and then connect this to distribution. Okay, then I want to select that noise and I want to select turbulence. Right, then I'm going to select uh, the contrast slide over here. And if I start increasing this amount, 
you can see it creates like a varied glowing effect. Now maybe with the black body emission, if I want to, I can bump this up some more. But if I go back to my noise, you can see if I start increasing the contrast, it's applying distribution according to this turbulence pattern. So now it's not a uniform glow. You can see some areas are glowing more than others. Uh, but play around with this until you find something that you're happy with. I'm putting mine on 1.24 because that's what I used on my material. So I'll just disconnect the distribution. This is your uniform glow. Okay, and this is a varied glow. If I want the uniform glow enabled with the turbulence enabled as well, I'll just have to bring my contrast like all the way back to zero. Then I'll start getting more of that uniform glow. Okay, so 1.24. Or you can just disconnect it. It's up to you uh, depending on what you're going for. Right, and remember you can change the color of these lights. All you have to do is select this gradient and change the color of this color picker. Right, so now we've got pink lights, whatever you want. Right, we can make it glow. And you can see the underlying dots over here, those blue dots. Like I said, it's quite subtle. But I just like, I, I wanted to add an additional layer of dots. But I am going to make my glow maybe a lighter blue, because this is a darker blue on these dots over here. And there we go. And another very important thing, the glow is also 100% dependent on the camera. So select the camera as long as you have post-processing enabled with Bloom. You can see if I turn this off, we're not getting that glowing effect. But with the Bloom enabled, it starts to glow. Okay, so there we go. Remember you can always go back and adjust whatever you want because this is a procedural material. If you wanted to change the color of our sphere over here, we'll just select this gradient and then you can make this any color that you want it to be. And you've got the glowing uh, dots on top of that. Right, so go and experiment and see what you can come up with. Maybe even go ahead and select this noise and clamp up the, uh, clamp up the contrast. You can see it actually starts making these dots a lot smaller without having to adjust the transform. As you see over there, and we're still getting this glowing effect on certain dots. Okay, so that's the end of the tutorial. Remember, you can also go back to the camera. Maybe you want to increase the glare power. You'll get more of these glare lines so that that looks really crazy right now that's a bit too extreme for me but you can also adjust some of that in the post processing on the camera so this camera plays a really important role with this material as well but anyway that's how you create these glowing dots you can see that in the shader tree it looks a little bit complex but it's super simple to set up and now you know exactly how to do it so go ahead create your glowing dotted materials and apply it onto anything and now you can see the power of procedural materials as well anyway stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials i truly appreciate the support on this channel and goodbye <laughs>